Hello, this is John with NELS. And in this demo on diversity of reading, I'm going to be demonstrating JAWS, a JAWS screen reader with a bookshelf, which is a reading app by Vital Source. And I'm running JAWS 2022 with Windows 11. And the bookshelf version is an older version designed for Windows 7 and Windows 8. I found that the newer version didn't work very well with uh, this version of JAWS, so I ended up using the older version for this demo. And we will demo a, a book created by Nels for these series of presentations that has a variety of elements uh, so that we can uh, demonstrate how they are read by assistive technology. And once I do the JAWS demo, I will do a brief demo of Read Aloud in another reading app called Bookworm and finish with some uh, thoughts on some different reading apps. So we'll start going through the book here. I will not cover the, all of the text in the book, but try to give you enough context you get a sense of how these different elements are uh, read when I read them with JAWS. So we'll start with the cover page. Cover page. And in this case, all it says is cover page, uh, even though there is an alternative text description of the cover image, uh, it isn't read with this uh, combination of, of screen reader and the reading app. So we'll move to the next section. Document. Page has one region and no links. Title page, title page, region page I. NNELS accessible publishing summit demo 2023 title page region end. And there we have the title page. And JAWS is quite customizable uh, as far as what it reads. Um, I have adjusted it a little bit so a couple of things are indicated that are not read by default so we can get a sense of what the possibilities are, but most of this will apply even with default settings. Uh, so we have the te text of the title page uh, along with the page number at the beginning. And that's all we have here. I'll move on to the next section. Accessible Publishing Summit Demo-2023. Page has one region and two links. Copyright page, copyright page, region page, i.e. cc0 slash public domain accessible publish publishing. And here we have the copyright page. And you'll notice some of these uh, pages say there's a region, and that's just an area of text defined by the author of the book. Uh, it's possible to give a label to a region of text. And for example, this uh, copyright page doesn't have a visible visible uh, label in the text, but that's been added as a, a label for this region. Uh, some regions will have vis a visible uh, heading in the text for the label. It just depends on the section. And one thing about this section is there's a link further down in the text that goes to the NELS website. We'll just move down till we find that. No rights reserved. Published by colon. Link National Network for Equitable Library Service. And I'm just moving down by line. Uh, so there we had the link. And if I activated that, it would run, uh, launch my browser and go to the NELS website. Now links can be helpful, especially if the reader is using a, maybe a touchscreen device that has, uh, where entering uh, URLs or copying and pasting a URL is not sufficient than with a keyboard, but they are useful um, on computers as well to be able to open a URL without needing to manually copy an address. So I'll move to the next section. Page has no links. Dedication block quote page E to all readers. Block quote end. So we have the dedication. I'll uh, skip past this and we'll move to the first chapter of the book. Page one. Chapter one, a novel dash like chapter heading level one. Page has six headings and no links. Chapter one, chapter. And so I'll stop the, the reading there so we can go through some of it in more detail. Uh, so the first thing we have is a heading and it's a two line heading, but it's been quoted as one uh, heading element so that if I move by headings, it will only uh, land on the heading once instead of the chapter one is the first line and the novel like chapter for the heading is the second line. Uh, but when it's quoted as one uh, element, uh, if I move by heading, it only stops once on that entire heading. And I'll move down, we'll get to the epigraph. Heading level one, page one, chapter one. Heading level one, the novel dash like chapter, block quote. Left quote, forget what you think you know. Vampires exist, right quote, M dash blade, block quote end. 3 May, Mistress. There we had an epigraph and it's marked up as a block quote. It's a little bit, sets it off a little bit from the text. Now there is, um, it's kind of as an aside, there is a um, accessibility uh, role that can be uh, set on an element like a block quote or a paragraph to mark it as an epigraph. Um, and using that would not cause any trouble with reading systems that I've tried, but it isn't uh, supported from what I found uh, either. So it's it is available to mark an epigraph so that a screen reader could potentially uh, indicate that it's an epigraph, but it uh, hasn't received uh, support to this point in my experience. So now we have the uh, starting the text of the chapter, and I'll just move through these sections. This chapter is divided up by headings. 
So I'll just move through the, the headings and we can uh, read some of the, uh, the different elements. A section with a block quote heading level two. So here we have a block quotation and uh, JAWS, as we saw with the epigraph, it does indicate when a block quote starts and ends. So if I move down. I will now share a letter I received from my love. Block quote, 17, Chatham Street. So now we're getting into the content of the letter and I could continue reading this as I've read uh, uh, normally as I read the text. Another thing I can do when it's marked up as a block quote, if I know I want to skip past the to the end of this, I can skip uh, to the end of the element and it will uh, skip past the block quote, in this case, skip to the end of it. So I don't have to uh, read the whole thing. If I don't want to, I can skip to the text after the block quote. Block quote end. So let's jump me to the end here and I'll keep moving down. Heading level two, a section with a context break. Now we come to a context break. And context breaks can be marked up visually in various ways, such as uh, an asterisk or some blank space. Uh, but if they aren't marked up in a way that screen readers are able to uh, indicate them, uh, there's no uh, there's no indication of the context break. But in this case, it is marked up, so we'll move down. He displayed a skill in page three, the choice of crowns and the use of light troops, and in securing his own supplies whilst he cut off those of the enemy, which Kardakaya himself, god of war, might have envied. Separator. Dr. Heraclius Gloss was a very learned man, although no... And so there we had the paragraph and then the context break and then the start of the next paragraph and the, the context break, the return and separator there. And that tells me uh, there's some uh, a change of context here between these paragraphs. And also it indicated the page break. Um, now page breaks uh, can be marked up in the text as it is here. Um, and typically I found that reading systems will either read them or they may uh, not read them at all, uh, but they don't give users a choice. And this is one area where I'd like to see uh, some flexibility that even though page breaks are marked up in this book, uh, if the reading system offered uh, or a screen reader offered a choice where the, the break could be indicated uh, or skipped, that would give readers a, an option of uh, skipping them if they didn't necessarily want to hear the page breaks in the middle of the sentence. Uh, but the fact that they are uh, marked up does give the possibilities of being able to know exactly where the text of a page starts. If I wanted to uh, go to a certain page number, I can find out where that text starts. Or if I wanted to uh, cite a passage in the book, then I can tell exactly what page that's on. So even though there is the issue now of screen readers reading the, the page numbers, um, the mid-sentence in some cases, uh, I would say in my opinion, it's still useful uh, to have them since it does give the added benefit of knowing where the pages, the page divisions are. So we'll skip to the next a section. section with fashion without dash a language shift heading level two. So here we have a uh, language shift heading level three with a marked up language shift, which is a, a, a piece of text that's in a secondary language other than the different language other than the main text. So here we have English and French. The French expression, avoir l'esprit de l'escalier, refers to an inability to think of a witty comeback left parent or any sort of intelligent response right parent until it's too late to be of any use. So in this section, uh, it's had the language shift marked up and the, the proper French pronunciation. Uh, now we'll hear it without the language shift. Heading level three without a marked up language shift. The French expression of war l'esprit de l'escalier refers to an inability to think of. So in that case, uh, the reading flow is smoother, um, but it doesn't have proper French pronunciation there. And that's uh, often the trade off is that uh, text to speech systems. Uh, need to switch voices to read in another language. So it does create a pause and in some cases a different voice depending on the green reader or reading system, how it's, the speech is configured. And typically at NELS, we advise doing it for phrases or uh, sentences, but not as much for uh, single words. And there's no hard and fast rule in some cases, but it's more just something to be aware of that it does cause a voice change like this. And if you have a lot of single words where there's language shifts, it can be a bit jarring. So now we'll skip to the second chapter. Chapter 2A, more scholarly chapter heading level one. And there's the heading. Now the, the start of this is the same with an epigraph. So I will uh, skip to the next heading here. A section with list heading level two. And now we have a list. I'll just read through uh, some of the text before the list here. The practical man may justly observe at this point that the world of single vision is the only world he knows colon that it appears to him to be colon. List of three items, bullet real semicolon, bullet solid semicolon, bullet and self dash consistent. There we have a list of three items and I was able to arrow through them. I can also move uh, forward and backward by list items. So if I move backwards. Bullet solid semicolon, bullet real semicolon. In this case, it's not making a, a much of a difference since uh, each list item is on, a, on its own line. But if 
uh, it was a reference section, for example, with like a bibliography or a set of footnotes or endnotes where there was a, a, a title of the work followed by a URL. Um, it might be on multiple lines. Uh, so in that case, uh, moving by list items um, can be uh, can be a benefit. Another thing that can help is uh, this list also has uh, only has one level of hierarchy. Uh, so there's just one level of, of the three items. But if, uh, let's say, the first item had three uh, sub items that were indented underneath it, it's possible to mark that up as a nested list. So JAWS can indicate that the next three items are underneath this first one. And if the list is just marked up as a set of paragraphs with indentation used to show the hierarchy. Uh, that hierarchy is lost with the screen reader. And I'll skip to the next section. Uh, there is also a numbered list here, but it's um, the navigation is, is not the same as the bulleted one. Images section heading level two. Uh, now we have images. And in this section, we have uh, two images. There's a regular one with some alt text and one uh, following that that has a, a longer description, it needs more description. So we'll view the regular image. Heading level three regular image. One day when he was strolling in the square at the Lanson, he saw a large wooden hut from which came the sound of terrible howling while on the platform. A mount man incoherently invited the crowd to come and see the terrible Apache tamer tomahawk or rumbling thunder. A drawing of a shirtless white man, he reaches upwards with one arm against a starry night sky. Text reads colon for a spare ad astra. Graphic. Figure one colon illustration from Finland in the 19th century. And so in that case, we had the text followed by the, the uh, image description that was read and then the figure caption. Now, in this case, JAWS isn't indicating the fact that the image and the caption are in a figure element, which kind of uh, sets it off from the text around it. So it kind of groups the two together. And also, uh, one more other thing to point out about the image description is that it does have some, uh, some Latin text at the end there. Um, now, an image description like this is just a... Uh, string of text. It doesn't offer any capability of specifying markup like lists or tables or language shifts. Uh, but in this case, uh, my opinion, um, it isn't too big of a deal since I, I am able to go through text in detail if I want to spell words and so forth. Um, and otherwise, this uh, image description is short enough to fit in alt bits like this. So in, in my opinion, that's, uh, that's okay. Uh, we'll move over to the next image. Image link long description heading level three. A map of the Camerton and Limpley Stoke Railway in North Somerset. Click the link below to navigate the long description. Graphic. And so there we have the alt text, and I'll move figure down. Figure 2 colon map from the map that changed the world. We have the figure uh, caption. Link long description for figure 2. And here we have the uh, long description. I'll activate that, and this opens, uh, goes to another page in the uh, ebook with the description. Long description for figure 2. Link document page has two headings and one link. Heading level two figure two colon map from the map that changed the world. A map of the Camerton and Limpley Stoke Railway in. And this is a set of paragraphs here that describes the uh, the map in more detail. And I can read this just like any other, uh, just like another section of text in the book. Uh, so now I will tab. I'll get to a link that's uh, back uh, back link that returns back to the image. Return to figure two link. If I activate that. Document page has one region, twelve headings, and one link. A map of the Camerton and Limpley Stoke Railway in North Somerset. Click the link below to navigate the long navigate. So now we're back to the image, and it landed us on the text of, of that image. And the last thing I'll show here is a table. Uh, this book does also have footnotes and endnotes, but in this reading app, they don't work particularly well. In that, Jaws does read the the note reference, like the st uh, star for the footnote or number one for the note reference, but it. Uh, they aren't indicated as a link, and also the footnote isn't read as a uh, any different than a regular paragraph. It doesn't indicate that it's a footnote. Uh, but some uh, combinations of reading apps and uh, screen reader screen readers will um, uh, support that better. Page seven section with a footnote and an endnote footnote section heading endnote section heading level three section with a table heading level two. So I was just sk uh, skipping by heading there to get to the table. Now tables. Um, can be marked up so that the screen reader is able to properly indicate what the errors are for the, the content cells as I move through. So I'll move down. Table with three columns and five rows. It tells me the size. Name of emperor. Now I'm getting into the, the content. So I'm on the first uh, cell at the top left. I'll move down. Uh, I can move through this table by uh, rows and columns. So I'll move down the column. Augustus, row two. So I have the, that's the name of the emperor. And if I move to the right. Length of reign and years, 41, column two. Uh, so that now we got the length of reign in years, that's the heading for the column, and it read the, the number after it, which is the, the content in the cell. 
Um, and if tables are marked up, for example, as an image, I don't have this option to navigate the table in as much detail. Um, and in that case, if it does need to be presented as an image, the next uh, best alternative would be to have a, a long description for that that would link to a table in a different uh, area of the book that is coded up as a table so that I have the navigation options. Uh, so that's all, all I will demonstrate for the moment here with this book, but I will switch to uh, the bookworm app to show read aloud. And now we'll um, play a little bit of the read aloud of the first chapter. Chapter one, a novel like chapter. Forget what you think you know. Vampires exist. Blade, May 3rd. Stopped. Uh, so as you hear there, it read the text, but it didn't read any of the uh, information about it, like the fact that the um, chapter heading was a heading or that there was the block quote for the epigraph. And typically, uh, read aloud uh, uh, can be useful, especially for users that want to hear the, the text read out, but uh, might be able to see the visual content. Maybe somebody with a uh, print disability like dyslexia um, or a blind user might use this in the case where they just want to listen to the text, uh, but they don't care so much about the, the format and or the semantics of it. Uh, but typically, I would use a screen reader most of the time because that gives me more uh, information about the, the text of the structure of the book and more navigation, a uh, rich, uh, richer navigation experience. Uh, so that's what I have for the demo, but I would like to end with some thoughts about some different uh, reading apps. So I'll start with uh, 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 Adobe Digital Editions was uh, one of them that I reviewed and it does read most of the text, but it doesn't read uh, headings very well. The fact that text is a heading or image descriptions, uh, things like that, that I was getting with the book shelf uh, experience. Now, in some cases with unprotected EPUB books, there is a separate view that does the more of this information. Uh, but most of the books I've tried in Adobe Digital Editions uh, don't have that option. And it does sometimes tend to crash, uh, depending on the ebook when opening it with a screen reader. The bookshelf app that we covered here, uh, it's similar in that Vital Source does have a, a collection of books that's designed to be read in the app, but it does also offer the option to side load books, which is what we did here, loaded the, the book into it. Uh, now, the newer version of Bookshelf, has, I found it to be a little bit more sluggish when navigating with a screen reader than the, uh, the older one here. Um, and also, or certain types of navigation, like activating a link or maybe going to a page, tended to throw the focus off of the uh, reading area so that I needed to navigate back to the reading area, which is a little bit inefficient and also uh, tends to not put the focus at the desired point. If, for example, I wanted to navigate back from a endnote back to the reference, if the focus is thrown off, I might be placed in the correct document once I navigate to the reading area, but I'm not uh, put into focus of the, the note reference. So that's uh, a downside in those cases when focus gets taken off of the reading area. And another one I looked at was Dolphin Easy Reader. And the, for the most part, it reads the text quite well, though there are some situations such as uh, links to footnotes and that kind of thing, not uh, working with a screen reader that now doesn't work to navigate to the link. And page breaks aren't uh, read at all with that with the particular app. I wasn't sure whether it's a design decision or whether it's just a fact of the, the way the reading system is implemented that the page breaks aren't read. And another one I looked at here was Bookworm. That's the one we used for the read aloud. Um, this one presents the text of the book in a uh, basically a text box and does have some options to navigate, um, keys to move to different elements like headings and tables, uh, but it doesn't give as rich a reading experience as when I was able to read the context of the elements as I'm reading. So once in a text box, I don't get the, the context that what I'm moving past is a heading or the table navigation. Now, this app does have a uh, web view to be able to view the content in a browser, and that offers some more uh, navigation possibilities, um, but it doesn't offer the example, the uh, option, for example, to uh, move between sections easily without choosing a, a section from the context listing uh, or a go to page functionality. Another one I'll mention here was uh, is Google Playbooks, and this one works by letting you upload a book into the uh, through your browser and read it in a browser. Um, and the text was read okay, but the main disadvantage here is that it presented the text one page at a time instead of typically reading applications or present a document at a time. So in this case, we had uh, each chapter of the book in a separate document. So in book self, we were able to read a chapter at a time versus um, when I need to read a page at a time, uh, I need to frequently um, use the, 
the option to move to the next page and then navigate to the top of the page to keep reading. So it's a lot of smoother reading experience. And the one app that is, uh, works quite well with screen readers is Thorium. And the, uh, my colleague Sai is demonstrating that in another presentation. But in general, I found that that one works quite well for you know, uh, navigating pages. The focus is, you know, tends to be placed correctly in most cases on the correct position in the text. And the last thing I'll mention here, so as you see, there's a, uh, it, it depends both uh, on having a accessible uh, reading, reading system combination of reading system and screen reader, and also good markup in book to have uh, the content read well. Um, and sometimes uh, DRM or digital rights management is used, which limits the uh, book so that it can only be read with the particular reading system. And if that system doesn't have very good accessibility, then uh, the user screen reader user is limited to uh, whatever uh, accessibility that system does provide. So it can be an accessibility barrier if it doesn't provide a good reading experience. Or for example, if it only provides uh, read aloud like functionality where I can hear the text, but not the information about it that with the structure, uh, then that can be uh, not as useful. Uh, and it's uh, helpful if, if books are marked up well, since if reading systems do improve in the future, uh, then that content will be available already. It's just a matter of the reading system taking advantage of content that's marked up. Uh, and as well, if books are made available through systems like Sela and Nels, where uh, readers can read with their preferred reading system, then they're able to take advantage of any uh, accessibility that that reader that reading system offers um, for any content that's well marked up in the book. They're not limited to a particular reading app. And so I hope this presentation has given you a good sense of the very variation there can be in reading systems um, when used with a screen reader and the different types of uh, experiences that readers will have.